and welcome to those in the room and those online to the 2022 uh, candidates briefing for the local body elections. Um, my name is Doug Tate, Chief Executive for Central Hawke's Bay District Council. And again, uh, great privilege to welcome you all here uh, tonight. Um, I'm just going to start by passing over to Fire Pam for Parakia to kick us off. So, um, Fire. Um, so just for those in the room, we are streaming live to Facebook, so if you see me looking above your head there, um, it is looking um, towards the camera as well. So, yeah. Um, and though, for those online, we will take questions uh, at the end of Warwick session, so I'll um, we'll do some um, But just some introductions in the room, and um, Brent and Caitlin, you met Fire Pam earlier. Um, Brent, Caitlin, perhaps if you want to come up and Warwick, come, and, come into the limelight of the camera. Um, we'll do some very quick introductions, so um, Warwick, I'll let you. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for the um, introductions. Very shortly. Thank you, everyone. Uh, my name is Brent Chamberlain. I'm part of the staff here at Council I, uh, after the finances and also after the governance team. Hi, um, I'm Caitlin. I'm, I'm part of the staff here too, so I'm governance lead. So I do all the agendas and organise Council and committee meetings. And we've also got um, Peter Martin in the room and probably a proper hidden part, uh, uh, Peter. Uh, so Peter's here with Hawke's Bay Regional Council as well. So for um, if anybody online, you've got questions as well about Hawke's Bay Regional Council or, or the wider context as well, Peter's here. Um, so look, I'm just going to provide a few introductory words and some context on uh, the pre-election report and then hand over to Warwick. Um, we're probably going to be, um, Warwick said, about an hour, so, um, so we'll, see, we'll see how we go for, for timing. But um, look, I just want to say to you all, thank you. Um, thank you whether you're signed up or whether you're thinking about signing up or whether you're just thinking about democracy full stop. Um, thank you about standing, we're thinking about standing for Central Hawks Bay, for being our local voice and thinking about our future, the future of Tamatia Central Hawks Bay. Uh, more than ever, the sector of local government is going through what are some of the most unprecedented change. And we, we know we've got reform on all fronts, but also in that is what well, is pretty some, some pretty significant opportunity for those councils that can successfully lead themselves into the future. And look, we we talk about um, in our pre-election report or my pre-election report that's now on the website. Um, we talk I've talked successfully about the the challenges and the opportunities that are ahead for us for our uh, for our successive future. And look, addressing those challenges and opportunities um, is not going to be one for the faint-hearted. It's going to require us to work incredibly courageously, collaboratively, and with a strategy and a visionary energy for the future that we can ensure the future of this outstanding community. Um, as Chief Executive, basically the pre-election report is the one opportunity you get to kind of tell the story of where we're going, where we've been, but also the, the strengths and the, the real things we need for our future. And um, in that, I've identified basically three key strategic opportunities for our future. So we go through all of the all the necessities, the, the legal necessities of the financial tables and other things, but really key three key strategic opportunities for our, for our future. I just wanted to touch on those. Um, the first one is about working in partnership with Maori. And we know more than ever um, in terms of our future as a, as a collective partnership for the future, um, we've got some huge opportunity in this space. Um, as a council, we've made some really progressive steps over the last uh, three, six, nine years in this space, um, but we know we've got a lot more work to do. So that's our first, our first big opportunity. 
Uh, our second one is reimagining local government and the role of localism. And again, we've, I've talked briefly about the, um, the unprecedented reform growth in a central Hawke's Bay context as well. But how we, how we basically respond and we can think about what our future is in, in terms of a, future, a reviewed future local government as well. And then the third one is navigating through unprecedented change. And we know, again, we've got reform, uh, we have growth, but we also have these other pressures un and uncertainties that are potentially ahead in terms of what does our economic forecast look like for the future. And so with that needs to be a real strong positivity for the future. So look for those online, or and again for those in the room, I'd encourage you to really go through the pre-election report. Um, if you do have questions or you need further clarifications, um, Caitlin is here and Warwick is here as well. Um, so with that, I'm going to pass over to Warwick. Yeah. Um, thank you, Warwick. Thanks, Doug. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think I want to sit down. <laughs> We'll keep things pretty casual tonight, shall we? Uh, I've been doing this a long time and doing these presentations a long time. I've got um, 29 of them to do this year and I've got seven to go. So I know all these slides pretty much off by heart. What? 51 of them. Go through. I love PowerPoint. I'm going to read every single word on every slide slowly. <laughs> not. I'm not going to do test by PowerPoint. As Doug said, it'll probably take about an hour. Um, I need to just roll some questions as we go. Um, both in the room and on what? Um, you can get a bit of chat going because you don't want to listen to me for an hour. Um, and, um, see how we go. So, as Doug and Caitlin said, um, I'm the Council's Lecture Officer, Lots of Councils. As I said, I mean, elections a long time. Six years to be precise, 1986. Old. Look a bit. Seen through elections, got lots of candidates. If it was odd, I think I've got a pretty active bullshit radar. So when you deal with me as candidates, I want you to be straight up. You're going to get straight that back. Those of you who don't know me, I spent many a year in the council chamber. Next job is the 90s. So I know this neck of the woods well. I know the geography and I know it makes it a bit easier when it comes to it. As you can see, that's here we are, all the councils, based in Christchurch, total on that. Just to live here. About 200 elections a year. All in the agri sector. That's zero water workers, clients, balance, silver and farms, farmlands, farms down, all those guys. But we also do lots of other elections like lawyers, doctors, accountants, teachers. Last year elections about to start. Councils are the only elections we do that are entirely post. Every other election we do is post to full online. So, what's local government all about? What's the deliberate mistake I've made on that slide? Fresh up here, anyone? Going, going? Oh, same photo twice. Got that yet? All right, <laughs> a few slides about the council, then maybe Doug might chip in here on a couple of things. Some of the stuff is more busy the woods. But council is a pretty complex business. It's um, one that's a parliament specifically and another 60 odd that mentioned council in one form or another. So, those are the high end things that the councils do, the government does. <coughs> really being you know, on behalf of the community, consider strategic direction. 
make quick decisions about the infrastructure. Peter is here from the regional council, so a little while was a bit different, somewhat but different. So please don't hesitate to put Peter up with questions about the and the council elections and the things that I'm going to talk about about and this is probably the most important slide. It is a big deal. Not a five minute job. You get a bit of criticism sometimes. People come to this presentation, see these slides, listen to me, and go, I don't want to do that. You put me off. I make no apologies for that because being an elected member is an important responsibility. And it's a big role. And so please don't enter it thinking that it's a five minute job. Because it's not. We really are there to be the eyes and ears of the district and um, out to the governance of that as a result and make some big um, decisions. And Anne will cover this. These are things that the member does around the table. Governance, business management, and what we do. So council only employs the one person. How many full-time employees council? Uh, I think we're now up to 67 full time employees. So, um, no, staff on the books is about 90. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, what's Council's tenant? I oh, I quite think that. Yeah. That's nice. Mm -hmm. Business, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, what they speak. Mm -hmm. Not a job. These are the key skills that are handy to be an elected member. Not necessity, but handy. Um, those are the people skills. What's talking to people? What's listening to people? What's people interrupting you in the supermarket? Talking about things and coming out of the council table. Yeah. Public speaking skills, handy. Not essential. If you haven't done much public speaking, I'm only sitting around the table, council table, we're talking to people, we're going to meet some behalf of council. You soon will be able to public speaking. You soon get the hang of it. As Doug has said, dealing with some pretty complex issues that require lots of reading time. Next slide will cover that a bit more. But the key one there is the second to last one, councillor. Councillors do think district wide. Even though you might be elected from your ward and have good networks in your patch, you're there to think for the whole district and make decisions on behalf of your ward. I remember when I was here in the 90s, when I first turned up, the big decision on the table at the time was we're really going to have a new aquatic centre in It was a big, big deal. We had lots of debate. Lots of dramas, lots of arguments. But that's a really good example of a massive decision that affects everyone. There's elected members. Sometimes you get involved. And looking back on it now, where we're 30 years later, people would have thought they didn't have one in the first place. It is what it is, as long as you're going to make those big calls. Good example. So meetings on Thursdays in the morning. This is the current council. Each council decides their own plan of attack. It might change after the election, but generally it sticks to these. This deal, three or four hours. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A bit of a slave driver. Uh, 20 meetings, 
in the council meetings, in the meetings, lots of other meetings as well. So what may end up doing one day a week? E yeah, easy. Yeah. Easy. Mayor is pretty much a full-time job. Councillors, two to three days, 20, 25 hours, mostly. Lots of reading reports, agendas. Some of those, what, a couple hundred pages long, can't they? If not more. <laughs> My other councillors tell me that for one hour of meeting time around the table, it takes one hour of reading time at home. That'd be about right. Is that a book? So, you know, reading your council agenda, if you're here for five hours, it's going to take you four to five hours to read it. All elected members provided with an iPad, laptop. Device, I'm just nice. So, all agendas provided our channel. Yep. Yes. And you get a hard copy if you really want. If you really want to, it, it, it gets expensive after a while, but yeah. we try and really encourage people to be online. So, yeah. Meetings by Teams and Zoom, much? Uh, on and off. So we, we did sort of during the COVID period, if we've got people away or councillors away, then, then we do. Um, but for the most part, we really try and encourage people to be in be in the room. Um, yeah, it's probably like, yes, there's the council meetings and workshops that sit with it, but um, so I might be on your next slide too, Warwick, but obviously the kind of the other governance support meetings we have, whether it's things like our wastewater governance groups um, and our other kind of complementary uh, meetings we have as well. So it's um, so it's, it's sort of a perception. It's just council meetings as well. That's a that's a number of other um, supporting roles that uh, governance give to the business as well. And if so. you're appointed onto other trusts or other organisations, then you know, those meetings as well outside the council time frame. Yeah. And flexible in the evenings or weekends sometimes, sometimes quite often. The random plan time might be two or three weeks here, it's pretty much every day. Uh, it kind of varies. Um, the yes, annual plan, long term plan are kind of the big. Um, kind of the big periods of work, but often we go through, I kind of describe them as the waves where we'll be focusing on specific issues, um, where generally we will be kind of a deep dive might be the better term for it, where we're actually doing some really consolidated work. So it's not sort of a one-off period in a year, there's often kind of periods of time where we'll do some relatively deep consolidated work. Um, yeah, the pressure kind of varies if that makes sense. Yeah. So as a councillor, it would be hard to do around a <clears throat> it could work, yeah. 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 It would be challenging, but you could still do it. Yeah. That's what the pay is currently. About to change after the election is a new determination by the remuneration authority. But that's what it is at the moment. And you'll notice that a regional councillor paid a little bit more. Bigger organisation, more complex. We'll figure about that later. So, details about the election. My role um, is governed by the legislation, the local electoral act and its regulations. The prescriptive, black and white, to some degree, to the grey and others. <coughs> what I don't do, uh, it's all about you know, level playing field. Level. But what I don't do is don't get involved in campaigning space for political machinations. I'm not interested in what you might say in your politicking to get elected. I'm not interested in what you might say about each other on the campaign trail or on social media. I blame Mr Trump for teaching people how to behave badly on social media these days. But if you end up calling each other nasty names on social media, don't come complaining to me. Outside my sphere of caring. I just stick to the nuts and bolts of running the election in accordance with the timetable with these key dates. Being the elections opened a week ago, close Friday, 12 noon, we're off the board. Not 12.01, 12 noon, Friday. Amy said this a few times, please do not leave lodging your nomination till the last minute. So why not? 
So those are the key dates. Um, of course, one there is that your signs won't be up. I haven't checked yet if there are signs out and about yet. See any? No. Could be. Nara and Nate, yeah. Eighteen is two months. Council is different. Wellington is six weeks. Don't ask me about Wellington, Mr. Eagle. Signs are signs, audience policies are audience policies, they're all different. Three months, you put them up in white. Okay, so you guys will know this, these are positions up for grab, mayor and eight councillors, two wards, in that way for a while, and the regional council with now two constituencies. That's the introduction of constituencies for the regional council. There's 33 councils around the country that have put in many constituencies on many wards this time around. And I'm dealing with lots of those in the councils I look after. So, um, as Doug said, an interesting space, exciting time in that respect. Um, and maybe something that you guys look at next time around. And that journey, and it's opportunities for people elsewhere. Pretty exciting. All candidate names in those elections on the voting papers are in random order. So even within your household, you and your partner, the voting papers, the order of the candidates will be different. You can think of it on the fly. But the candidate profile book will send you just in order. Profiles is an alphabetical. Questions so far? <coughs> It's a turnaround, so when the results come out, yep. how quickly are you expected to take up that uh, position and start attending meetings? Question. I'll come to that later. I've got a slide that talks all about that. Um, but essentially, it's a week after the results are announced as to when Council's first meeting is. Right. So in reality, it's going to be before the end of October. Yeah. We'll talk about that specifically a bit later on. Okay, and then just one more question. Just want to be clear on the time commitment. So, is it, are we talking about a minimum of two days a week required to adequately fulfil that commitment? Yeah, not yes. Yeah, yeah. So, so again, feel free to chip in more. But kind of our context currently is um, generally at least a day every few weeks is a good solid council meeting, yeah. um, or whether it's a committee meeting or, or, or the likes. Um, but you can expect at least a good another day across that week of either meeting preparation or additional meetings or you know, potentially just meeting with community or um, workshops. workshops or um, governance group meetings or um, you know, dealing with matters or like again you can probably at least expect two days a week yeah. oh, okay. yeah. Yeah. I mean look at peaks and a troughs there's other weeks where it's more um, yeah. Yeah. so obviously the Thursday is locked in if have, have to be there and and a lot of you know in your own time stuff and the weekends and that's a bit easier to work around work commitments and that sort of thing. so look it, it will be for the new council to determine the days and the times of the year they choose to hold the cap for me. There are some councils that have them five o'clock in the evening. But most are during the day. Mm -hmm. Some start at one o'clock, some start at nine o'clock. Which council decides that after the election when they get up and running? Peter Ian saying the deal with the regional council, the what the elected member for three days a week? We have our council in the room for an asking that question. You will. Um, yeah, pretty similar, really. Uh, one meeting um, a day a week. Norm normally always a, a Wednesday up in Lake here. Um, obviously a bit more travel um, from, from here. That's sort of a, an hour before and after each meeting of travelling. Um, and then, yeah, you put your prep. Um, we don't normally have 200... And just so today, regional council, we had 80 pages in our agenda, so that was pretty good. Um, but yeah, then there's the other meetings. Um, oh, 
school holidays. We just had two weeks pretty much off. So um, it was just blocked out and we didn't have any meetings. So that was pretty, um, that was pretty good. Um, good timing. Well, some councils do that. I run at the city have a dry July. They block out every year, July, and have no meetings. Yeah. For a month. But certainly I value my weekends because I won't stop, email, stop. Let's catch up at home. So. So, um, all your nomination documents have to be submitted together. You've got to put in nomination paper, profile, photo, evidence in your citizenship, and print and deposit at the same time. Now, bring your nomination paper into Caitlin today and go, here it is, I'll bring my profile back next week. She won't accept it. Here we go. Evidence in your citizenship, just want to see it, I need a copy of it. Passport, this to the citizenship. <clears throat> can be scanned and emailed. In fact, most candidates do this. Scan and email all their documents through. Last time we had 75% of the candidates do that. And you can pay your deposit, deposit online as well. If you do, then we just want to see the transaction receipt. You do it online. So we can see where it is in the bank account. So that might be you, know, you can turn into a PDF and attachment, attach it, or you can just take a screenshot, send it as a photo. Remember that the nomination paper is a public document. Anyone can come and have a look at it. So the details on there are in the public domain. So the nominator and seconder, they need to know their details are going to be all and sundry. No surprise deal. Make sure they know. Same with your details, your contact details. We put them up on the council website a few days after the nomination's closed so that anyone can contact you. So if you have some of those details that you don't want in the public domain, you can redact them at the time you give your nomination. Okay. So just let it know. Otherwise, it's going to end up in the big wide world. On the nomination, oh, sorry, on the voting paper, you can just use your commonly used name. Edward Ted, or you can use a nickname. A couple of candidates up north, one of the guy's name is Paul, everyone knows him as Porky. He is Porky on the voting paper. We have some characters around here that do that. For another candidate whose nickname is Rabbit, he is Rabbit on the voting paper. Okay, well, everyone knows him by. It. Why not? All about people know him. But no titles, no qualifications on the voting paper. You can, though, have this thing called a party affiliation. I'll show you some example sheet. That's, it's really these days a tagline, slogan about what you might stand for. Doesn't have to be anything, can be nothing, can be independent. And have tagline. If this can't be more than 38 characters, that's the space we've got to print it. It can't be offensive or confusing, and I'm the judge of that. Can use uh, you know, Green Party or Labour Party or one of the political <laughs> affiliations, proper political party. If you do, hang on, I need to see a letter from the political party saying you have authority to use that endorsement. What does the $200 cover? Oh, yeah, good question. It's really a non-refundable deposit just to ensure that you're serious. Okay. If you get more than 25% of the lowest successful person in that election, so let's say for the mayor, you're standing for the mayor and the winning mayor gets 2,000 votes, you get 25% of that, 500 votes, you get your turn to deposit back. You're done that. 25%, you don't. That's really what's I was just curious. And it's been $200 since 1976. Mm -hmm. It'll be time to change it, but anyway, it's not another decision for me to make. So, also on the nomination paper, you do have to state the other elections that you might be standing in. But you can stand in multiple elections. You can stand for the ward, you can stand for the mayor. 
you could stand for the mayor of King George Bay and the mayor of Hastings. Okay. I came the last time you stood for the mayor of Masterton, Carterton, South White, on the deal that he'll get elected and amalgamate all three of them. Grand plan. <laughs> Didn't get elected at all. But stood $200 every time. So every position you stand for, $200. You do also have to state if you live in the area that you stand in. It's quite common. Um, so the boundary of the ward, stand in the ward, you just have to say, don't live in the ward. Those two bits get printed at the top of your profile statement. I'll show you what it looks like. You don't have to, you can live for where you are. Not part of the community. Regional Council nominations go to Peter and Leanne at the Regional Council office. Right. So there's a voting paper in 2016 at Tate Oh, that's <coughs> uh, it's just a good example of some party affiliations. You see there that the candidate surname are in that format, surname, and then the first name. Underneath it are a few little taglines. Some of them are quite interesting. More democracy, less bureaucracy. Have no idea. Uh, energy and experience. Uh, effectiveness, efficiency, and we get right. growth. Um, yeah, pretty much anything you like. Or nothing at all. There's no, you know, no obligation to do anything. You nothing. In the rural councils, there's more prevalence of people having nothing or independent than some of the tag ones, but entirely over 10. Just can't be more than 38 characters. My favourite one down the bottom there, uh, real change in TCC, guaranteed. Yeah, it was real change in TCC, it's now commissioned. Yeah. <laughs> Do we know who got it? Whose line work? <laughs> <laughs> On that election, all dock, brownless, Clout, Guy, and Mason were particularly successful. Obviously. What? Doesn't really matter. Real mix in there. Good question, though. Yeah, God, it's all right. Whatever floats your boat. Here's the nomination paper. Put them on the table over there. Just so make sure you grab it. Backside of the nomination paper. Um, key thing here is the details of where you how you deposit and how you pay it and what we need to see. And then the email address there goes to Caitlin that we're going to scan an email through, which we encourage. So, as I said before, you've got to be New Zealand citizen. You've got to be on the parliamentary electoral roll somewhere in the country. You're nominated and second, you've got to be in the area that you're standing in. So you're standing in the ward, and not only sitting, you've got to be on the roll in the ward at the address you put on the nomination paper. So we're surprised, I'm available, put in the nomination paper with the nominator's address, and they've moved and they haven't changed their address in their lecture role. It happens every day. Not a big drama. The nominator and second, they can check that really easily. Check it on the printed copy of the lecture roll, which is a copy here, Kevin. Okay? No. Down the front. Down the front counter. Yep. Down the front counter. Lecture roll out there. Check that the details are correct. Or anyone can just go to www.vote.nz and plug in your own details, and it will tell you what the address is on the lecture roll. So if it's not correct, you can change it online while you're there. Really easy to do. Get on and signature removed, then we'll want to just verify that the new address is correct. So we'll probably want to copy of a power account or something, make sure that it is in fact correct. Or find someone whose address is in fact correct. Can't stand for the council and the regional council at the same time. And you be careful if you have a contract with council for more than 25k, including GST a year. All the hoops around this stuff gets a bit messy. If you're a shareholder or a director of a company that has a contract, 
and you have to get prior approval before you're a candidate. Not after. Can't be retrospective. Got to get prior approval before you put in the nomination. If you're in that boat, please sing out, talk to me about it. I'll put it in the right direction. Or just go to the OAG website, oag.govt.nz. OAG, obviously, the Auditor General. They've a truckload of stuff in there about how all that works. Check it out. Pens, if you're the CE. Uh, it's, not, it's not really. It's more if you have a if you get a pecuniary advantage from that contract. So it would depend on the relationship. Any questions about all that? Can you change your mind? Not really. You can change your mind up until the close of nominations. Nomination in tomorrow, go home, have a couple of wines and think, what have I done? Bring up Caitlin and go, no, oh, no, 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 <laughs> withdraw me. Sure, no problem. Before they close the nominations, not after, unless you can provide me with a certificate to say that you are medically incapable of carrying out the role if you were elected. This does happen. I had a lady last time who put the nomination in early and on the last day nomination had a stroke. Medical team then gave me a letter a week later saying she's been capable of carrying out the role that she can win. Another guy had an accident, he couldn't sit around the council table for six hours. It does happen. Just as it does happen, sometimes candidates pass away during the wedding period. As well as. So if you're in that boat and something goes wrong, sing out. That's what happened with the regional council, isn't it? With the three. Yeah. And they ended up on the, up still on the yeah. nomination. Yeah, good point. We talked about that last night at Hastings. So, you know, there's a guy who stood those nominations, but then changed his mind. It's a family issue. Went to the truth. Couldn't. So, I had to stay on the voting paper, but then did a don't vote for me campaign. <laughs> Right. Right. And what happened if he had been successful? We had a lot of debate about that. If he if he was successful, then he's a, then he's a councillor. Over to him as to whether he resigns on day one or not. He does. It's got to be another another day. election. Oh. So you hope you die then, don't you? Really? Yeah. Yeah. Candidate it wasn't one of my elections. It was a candidate last year who stood. She was the comms manager for the regional council. What I understand in the community board filled in their nomination paper, they filled in the wrong one, filled it in for the ward, not the community board. Didn't want to be a ward councillor, couldn't withdraw, couldn't change after closing the motion, she can't change it, couldn't change it. So she had to run a campaign, don't vote for me, I don't want to get elected. She nearly did. And just missed out. That would have posed a few missions. So, you know, be careful about it. Caitlin will ask you at the time, are you certain that's the election you want to stand for? If you say yes and sign on dotted line, change it after the closed nominations. Okay. We had a guy last time, actually, I'll give it. A little anecdote. The guy who stood in McKinsey for the mayor, who was a TV reporter, and did it on a joke to see how easy it is to stand as a candidate for this whole big news, news article. Yeah. How easy it is to be a candidate. Stood, forgot to withdraw it. After the closed nominations, his employer didn't want him to be the mayor or a candidate, and he had some issues. So he had to run a really big don't vote for me campaign and try not to get elected. He didn't think I'd know that. But it caused him a lot of problems. So be careful about it. He can go to custard sometimes. So 150 words, max 150, not 151. 
<clears throat> I do count them. That one counts to the nth degree. No special formatting, no bullet points, no italics, nothing fancy, 150 words, max. English and or 150 in today. Be surprised if people will give me 153 words and go, yeah, it's fine, it doesn't matter. It's just 150. No, max 150. If that's the case, then I'll try and do the old I am to I'm, I have to I've into Hawks Bay, the CHP, and get it under 150. If I can, great, we'll move on. If I can't, I'll take it back to you and go, we'll change it and Quickly hurry up and get this sort of stuff around. Be careful about that. About yourself, what you stand for, not about anyone else. Not about another candidate, not about Doug as the CE. About you, your policies, what you stand for. Not my role to check what you put in your profile. You can put qualifications, you can put things you've done. If you tell porkies, I don't want to know, that's your problem. Chances are someone will raise it. Because everyone knows. You're done. Pick the facts, don't tell porkies. Then we go. Once the profiles are signed off, we'll put them on council's website a couple of weeks after the close of nominations, along with the kind of conduct and as I said before. Photos. Photos are interesting. Color, hidden shoulder shot within the last 12 months. Not a photo from three years ago. In the last 12 months, that is a current likeness. Caitlin okay, well, will check this. And if she says to me, that photo is not a current likeness, I'll come back to you and we'll get another. Also, don't rip off. Your photo off Facebook, it's 72 DPI, low res, you get this, because it needs to be decent resolution, preferably 300 DPI. DPI means dots per inch, don't worry too much about that. But what you know, the iPhone takes it at 300 DPI, 72, low res, we pixelate and then we print, you look like a fuzzy bear. You don't want that. You don't want that. I'll check it back. Thank you. Just yourself. No dark sunglasses, no hats, no caps, no pets, no parrots, no dogs, no cats, no other people, no trees, nothing fancy, just no other people, just a head and shoulder shot of yourself. Oh, doesn't matter the size of it, it's all about the resolution. We'll crop it to the right size, we'll clean it up as much as we can. Not Photoshop. You can, in your campaign, use whatever photo you like. And your billboards, your flyers, your posters. You can use a photo from 10 years ago if you want to. You can Photoshop it as much as you like. No problem. It's just the one you give me, gotta be, within the last 12 months, current likeness. Like one. Beautiful. Nah, isn't it? See the format of my name? That's how it looks in the profile book. With a wonderful affiliation, proven, dedicated, and real, I think. <laughs> uh, and then those two sentences that are not part of 150 words. My principal place of residence is in the ward. Uh, and I'm also standing for the minute or something else. If you are. If you're not, nothing appears there. It's all that bit, not part of 150 words. And then you start and put the words after that. English, then today. Or just today. That's printed two up in a little DLE size booklet, fits an envelope, you know, a little one, double folds out, two on a page. Okay. Any questions about that? No. Okay, a bit about campaigning. More than halfway through. Pretty much no rules about campaigning. Campaigning could start any old time. You can even 
do pretty much whatever you like. So, so I don't really care what's saying in the campaign space. What I do care about is that you can't use council resources. Can't use the logo, put the colours on the logo. Can't use the photo sitting outside, standing outside the council building, holding the photo of the council building behind me. Can't campaign or election air sitting around a council table. Mm -hmm. Remember the public, you can't rock up, sit in the public seats. When Doug gets up to speak, stand up and whip out a vote for me sign. No. Or can the elected member rock up wearing a vote for me t-shirt? Or a cap, make CHP that again. No, no, no. No, no campaigning. It should be a sign on the door that says no campaigning or electioneering during council meeting and on council premises. Library, legal, anywhere. That's the resource. Can't be used for campaigning purposes. Any questions about that? Common sense, you'd say. My experience with elections, sometimes common sense goes way out the window. Yeah. My job is to rein it in. I loved it. Any campaign material, every piece of campaign material, everything, wires, billboards, caps, buttons, hats, balloons. Sign towed behind a plane in the sky. Any piece of campaign material has to have the authorization statement on it saying authorized by candidate contact details. It used to be address, physical address of the candidate. But the issues and all that stuff has changed on the 1st of July. Now it can be authorized by itself. Have one number, email, peer box, or link to a website where those details are on. Doesn't have to be your physical address anymore. But it needs to be your email, phone number, and name. Those three? No, no just one of them. Oh, okay. Just, just one of them. Can be Wilson. <clears throat> doesn't say, doesn't matter how big or small it is, can be you know, a sticky label in the corner of the sign. Just as long as Katie gets a complaint that says she can't see it, she hops out of her car, stands in front of the sign and goes, oh yeah, I can see the authorization there. It's good. So, okay. You also mentioned that the email address for existing, existing members of council can't be here. See. Correct. Can't be your council email address. Can't be your council email address. Personal email address. Includes the nomination form. Correct. Can't use your council address. Can't use your council email for your campaigning purposes. Nor on contact details. Change it. Be careful about the campaigning and be truthful about what you say. In your advertising, if someone complains that you're telling porkies in your ads, they can make a complaint to the Advertising Standards Authority. People will investigate the process for that and I'll deal with it pretty quick. Social media, wild, wild west. <laughs> can be good. Yeah, there's some good campaigning tools on social media. But be careful about it. When the council's social media channels are council's social media audience, not your audience. So you can't use council's social media for furthering your campaign. Disclaimer on there already it says any campaigning comments will be deleted. And if you continue, Spam it with campaigning stuff or trying to raise your profile and you'll be blocked. The council up north blocked three people used to have doing the same thing. Be careful about it. You can, though, take council's posts and send them out to your audience. No worries. You can take the post about anything. No problem. You can take council post, send it out with a campaigning message if you want to. You just can't reply back. 
councils of the page. Mr. Green. With Mr. Google, with any comments, because that's using councils awareness for campaigning and will be thought. Can I comment on a council page as me and not as my campaigning? What do you mean by comment? Or just say something positive about council. Well, not say vote for me, but just, you know, like so from time to time, you might say way to go team or something like that. That's just, you know, just be positive because that's what we are. Is it good to right? We're positive. Yeah. Yeah. Careful about that. Because so just don't comment on anything the council's doing at the moment. The moment you do that, someone could accuse you of, well, you're not campaigning, of just raising your award, raising your yeah. hands you by being there. Yeah. So, so just don't. Even though it's something you'd normally have done for the last whatever, just don't do it. Just ignore council. During the campaign, you can take the post and send them out. You just can't do. But don't make a comment. Those things. No comments. No replies. No pitch tagging. No rating or reviewing. No of those things. Basically, go outwards, not go back. Pretty straightforward. And if you do get it wrong, like it's not, it's not the end of the world. Well, no, it's not as if you're going to be fired or anything. We'll just tell you about it. We'll zap the comment. If you continue to do it, then we might have a serious chat in. So, well, pretty hidden. Yeah, it's, it's really managing perception. Yeah. So, what happens like that, quite often, someone shares a council page or council post, yeah. and it could be about rates increases. Yeah. And you say, well, actually, it's like this. And then and you get, you know, and you say, well, no, it's like this. And, and you're just operating as a, Councillor, not as a campaigner. How does that work? If it's BAU. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah. But shades of grey. Yeah. When does when does BAU become raising profile campaigning? Mm -hmm. Yes. So very yeah. Very pushed. If you're unsure, just you know, start to go. Okay. We got we got to be practical about it. Mm -hmm. It's not the end of the world, but it is what it is. Mm. When you get your voting paper at home and you tick your box, next to your name, don't take a photo of it, put it on Facebook. <laughs> Every time someone does, it's against the legislation. <laughs> I'll jump on it real quick. Not post the complete voting paper. Listen to the paper on that line, complete voting paper on Facebook. And if you're doing um, boosted advertising on Facebook, I agree with this in any respect. Say, I think it's the Google's Instagram or whatever. Facebook advertising boosting, you can do that. You just have to register with Facebook as a politician, jump through some hoops. Could you prove your identity and then they'll charge you for the privilege to do whatever works out the IP address someone's looking at and it'll boost the ad or some geography. Signs, my favorite topic. Not signs. 8th of July, as we talked about before. So you can put your signs up now. Be careful though about the signs. There's a few rules. Read the ordinance policy. The council's ordinance policy is different. You put it on private land, put it on someone's fence. But just make sure you get permission from them first. Otherwise, they might come and take down. Face it. Waka Kotahi are really anal about signs on state highways. They take no prisoners. And they take your signs down without consulting you and ask questions later. So don't put them up outside breaching their rules. It's not probably get involved in that. They'll deal with it. 
remember that the cost of the wood holding up your sign is not an alleged expense. Strange as it is, the cost of the sign writing is, we come to alleged expenses and donations in a minute. Cost of wood, not an alleged expense. So therefore you've got no excuse to use cheap ass wood holding up your signs and it blows over all the time. Put some decent wood up so that it stays up. Because it's not a cost to your campaign. <clears throat> So, you've got to record the expenses that you spend on your campaign from the 8th of July to the 8th of October. And you have to record donations that you've received. Any donation, any amount, any donation, every donation. Even if you got it last year and it was for your campaign, you have to record that and who it is from. If someone gives you five hundred dollars on the slide and says, "Yeah, it's five hundred dollars cash for the campaign," don't tell anyone. It's anonymous. I want to remain anonymous. They can't. If you know who it's from, or you can reasonably work it out. He's in your bank statement. It's got a name. You've got to record who it is from. Put it in the donations return that comes to Caitlin and I after the election that goes on council's website for seven years. Really important. It's your return, it's not my return. I don't care what's in it. You have to be satisfied that the information you provide is 100% correct and can be verified. So how could you get an anonymous donation these days? If someone puts a paper envelope in your letterbox in the middle of the night, but you couldn't see who it was, perhaps, maybe, hard to do. I guess some of those can let you know. I'd love to get some of those. It's a good idea. If you could, mm -hmm. perhaps that is anonymous and you could say that is the case. But who else? It's not just the assumption, but if the amount is less than 1500 and list it as anonymous. The 1500 thing is good clarification. The 1500 thing is there's a bit of debate about this. The 1500 is the limit at which, if it's over, you have to give the balance to the council. 1500 is the upper limit before you give to the council, if it's truly anonymous. But any donation you receive, $200, you're doing a meat raffle, $20. You've got to declare it. Transparency. If your elected members tripped up on this, where you might, then you, you don't have to accept a donation. You could, the councillors who have received a $500 donation from someone, put on the donations return, it turned out to be from property development. You then brought an item to council a year later. That elected member then sometimes has not been able to partake in the discussion about that item because they've declared a donation and therefore have an interest, potential interest in their contract. It can get really messy. So you don't have to accept a donation. And maybe when you do, just think about what that hit me up later. So if you're offered a donation and you don't want to accept it, do you need to declare that? No. Well, if you don't, if you don't accept it, okay. you need a donation. You need a donation. Okay. You just need an offer. <laughs> yeah, but it's just it's Seven just if <laughs> <laughs> it's just <laughs> it's just if you've accepted it, okay, and therefore used it in your campaign. Okay. This area is pretty messy. If you're unsure, ask for some legal advice. Legislations would be at best. You know, there's that court case at the moment about in Labour National that have got the issues about Chinese donors and all that. It gets really tricky about that stuff. Same rules apply. Be careful about that. Those are the maximum amounts you can spend. Including GST. 
based on the population of the area. This is what it is. Let me hand the handbook. That's a lot of council meetings to pay. That's a lot of council meetings to pay. Maximum you can spend. You don't spend anything. You like, you get lots of candidates to spend. No. You might have to put in a report that says, no. You have to put in expense documents. Even if it has no for donations, no. You can use your signs from three years ago and put signs 2019, no cost in 2020. Public document, anyone can look at it. The media take interest in these things. Someone will query it if you're not being truthful about it. If they do, my job is not to investigate. I don't care. I just pass it to the police. The police will investigate. Yeah. Got some complaints today, another council about an elected member's donations return from three years ago. Does happen because they're up there for seven years. Anyone can look at them. Most of the this already. Eight to the eighth of July, did about the twenty five percent thing. Public document is what it is. Getting near the end. Fences. Car thing. You can meet someone for a, in, a, in a cafe down the road and say, I'll shut you that copy. Can't say, I'll shut you that if you vote for me. That is treating. Don't shout your mates around at the pub and go, I got this. If you vote for me. Against the legislation. We are a country of dividobbers. I will hear about it. We get calls about this regularly. Someone, I have a head, someone buying them a drink, a nice head. I should vote for them. It's the legislation. I will have to do something about it. Have a chat. So please don't go there. Just the same as I don't want you to give out pens, hats, fridge magnets. Something that is an item of value, as in, could be used another purpose after the election. I know you're going to ask me, I'll bring in this. We had a mural candidate here a few years ago who gave out pens. It's time. The advice at the time was that, it, was that it was okay. Subsequently got a legal opinion that says that it isn't against the legislation. Be careful about that. Any questions about the whole section and the booklet about it? That section's out of the act. You go to sleep reading it, but important. A few um, photos of two slides about photos from signs. Here's a good sign and a not so good sign. One on the left, sweet, no problem. Circle, take of yourself. Great, move on. Authorization thing down the bottom. Doesn't need to say that, it can just say authorized by, but those words authorized by your name or an agent. Maybe you a person with a, with a number. One on the right though is a photo, so a sign of you as a candidate with a tick and the other candidates without a tick or cross. That is looking like an imitation voting paper because it's telling people how they should vote. How? Not who, how? Against the legislation. The guy did this in 2004 in the election. Had a complaint. The police got prosecuted. Really big deal all over the paper. Wouldn't be a good place to be. You get elected. Please don't go there. Ian Michael, Diane, Horror Fenner, 
2019, standing for re-election, sign written card, authorisation on the back, no problem. What's the problem with that sign? That card? Got no authorisation on the back? The building behind it is the council building. Right behind it was the council's name and the logo. So I had to ask Michael to move it. If you park it down the road, maybe not back, not right outside the council building, where everyone could see it while he was there at council building. You better pick up. Here's Tina from Masterton out with her chainsaw. Wait for me. Yep, good luck. Brady, Hut City. Life size sign of a man holding a sign. What could it? Here he is on the right, driving down the road, middle of the night. He's Brady holding his sign. Really? You might remember this one. Oops. Not there. There we go. <laughs> oh, damn my best. I can't promise anything. Here's Mark from Tauranga. Mark was not a candidate. <laughs> he was just someone who put a sign up for someone on the main roads in Tauranga on the first day of voting as a laugh. I knew he rang up and said, Here's your authorization, Mark. But he was not a candidate. The council thought it was quite funny and they left it up for the three weeks, a bit of entertainment. When it was on the news, we went viral. Yeah, well, uh, <laughs> what a good idea. But this one, not so much. First day of voting, horror phenomena was a fox actually. I think so. Council took it down within half now. <laughs> it is intimidating. Since these electoral officers are born. Nearly at the end, uh, the slides about the electoral roll. Um, as Brent said, out the front counter. You check it, make sure your details are correct. And you can send you a hard copy printed version. You cannot send you an electronic one. It's against the legislation. You can, however, if you really want, register with the Electoral Commission as a candidate, pay a fee. And they will provide it to you electronically in a CSV. Provide you jump through some hoops and sign a appropriate declaration that you're only going to use it for the two purposes. The cost, I think, is $512 plus GST. And get it electronically. Only through them. Up to the 12th of August, as I say, to change, update your details, because then choose the final role, which is what we use to send the voting papers out to. So if the details are wrong at that point, they're going to go to the wrong place. It means you're not going to get it. It means you're going to have to do a switch of vote. The people who haven't got the voting papers, they've got it and lost it. The dog's eating it. It's chucked in the fire. If you're in that space, come to the council meeting, come, there, come to the council building, see Caitlin, and the application form to go through. It takes about 10 minutes. Give you a special vote. We'll do about 50 odd, 50 or 60 central zone. Can come here and do a special vote if you were from Hastings and Napier as well. It's the same as you could drop the voting papers anywhere in an orange bin. Hey, and how many orange bins would you order? 10. 10. Great. Right. Cunning plan. So this is something new. How many of you know where your post box street receiver is? Deadly silence. Last time I posted anything was local government election last time. Yeah, where did you put it then? Who knows? So we've done a cunning plan this time and hooked up some orange bins, road cone orange bin that um, councils are getting. We've ordered. 420 of these around the country for 43 councils. Uh, and Adeline and Brent and Doug are going to work out spots around the district where it will be good to have them. Might be the supermarkets, might be the station, might be on the store, 
maybe at the moment. Some places where it's much easier for people to access and see and find where you can drop your photo. Be, you know, be in council, and then they all come back to the same place. Uh, so, Caitlin and Robin Brent will sort that out and we'll do a campaign around where they're going to be later. And you, as candidates, you can tell as many people as well. We want to get the word out there. That's fine. So, we'll make it easy. What's the percentage of um, the population that actually return their votes? Central yeah. exposure 52. Sure. Across the country, low borders. It's boring. How, how common is it that uh, that people get in and post? Yeah, quite common. Mm -hmm. Usually, every time there might be two or three mayors around the country that are unopposed. Mm -hmm. when, when, that, when that does happen, it counts, the return goes down because there's not a mayoral election. Well, about 10%, 10 to 15%. Um, but for, yeah, we have lots of community boards in small places around the country and quite often they don't have elections. Yeah. And quite often even they don't even get enough. So they have to buy elections, straight up. Yeah, how does it compare to the national elections? What's the vote? 78 percent. Polling booth, so one day, line up, line up, line up. Although it's not the same sort of deal, but yeah, polling booth, not post. It's not so easily forgotten. Not so easily forgotten. It, it is there a difference between regional and district councils in terms of voter tenure? Well, uh, they're all on the same voting paper, so oh, no, yeah. whatever the council is is what the regional council is in that council. But you know, here, um, Napier's 48, Hastings 45, Bay is normally over 50. Some um, rural ones down south get up to 60, 65. The city's, I think Auckland was 29 last time, 82, that's its numbers. Yeah, hopefully, that'll make a difference. I'm so cunning. <laughs> Hopefully it'll make yeah, it's like the first time we've done it, so yeah. we'll see what happens. We're gonna be locked. We're gonna be locked. Cable tight, monitored, indoors, in the rain, with a slot on the top, uh, a cable tied on each corner. But no, we don't want someone running off down the street and just <laughs> we'll front page of paper, would it? I don't know, I'd probably do job. <laughs> Let's hope not. <laughs> And challenge. <laughs> All right. Any questions about all that stuff? Um, yeah, turn out is what it is. The likes of you know, Fonterra, board of directors, 60%, 55%. Most of our other elections, 30 Civil elections, 30%. And the league councils are pretty good. So then the results, um, we talked about that before. Uh, so we'll hit the button on the Saturday afternoon, introduce the result, send it through to Caitlin, and then Caitlin and Brent and will hold on the phone and they'll ring everyone with the result mid afternoon. And once they've done that, uh, we'll then punch it up to the website in the world now. So yeah, early afternoon on the Saturday, probably V by two ish. We'll have it through about one o'clock. And then after the special votes have been all sorted, the orange buttons that are in the on the day, we produce the final result in the following week, at the 13th. And after that, then Doug does his thing. Um, and calls the first meeting of council. That date been scheduled as to when it is? Yeah, so we've got a 19th of October. So in the um, for those edits there in the back end of the pre for the fourth page. Um, she has kind of a date, some tentative dates in there as well around zone meetings, swearing in, yeah. and kind of what I tentatively booked in for some induction days as well. So so just so if you're trying to plan your life ahead, um, yeah. 
do this as far in advance as we can. So, so the end of October, the first couple of weeks in November, we'll be busy. Bit of induction involved, bit of training. And the council meeting itself, the first meeting is you know, a big deal. Uh, friends and Fano can come along. Quite a ceremony. Exciting thing to be a part of. Maybe the place that's around a little bit. So what's the, uh, um, so say you get a, you get elected to council and afterwards you're struggling with one part of it, say, that you're not feeling confident about or something. Do you work as a, a great big team and help each other out if somebody's struggling with one particular, you know, and say, well, you've done much, this is the way you do it or whatever. Yeah? Either either. Um, so look, yeah, Jim, my, my expectation of elected members would be that that's how we all collectively work as a, okay. as a collective team. So um, certainly that we would leave no one hanging. Um, yeah. Yeah. So and as part of the induction as well, depending kind of on kind of the background experience you have, it might well be actually, you know, I'm sweet on those five things there, but actually I wouldn't have a clue about this or this yeah. or this. So. Um, yeah, so there will be a, a generic induction, but probably the um, we again, and it's recognised in the pre-election report and on the website as well. This kind of place of that ongoing self-development. So, mm -hmm. as elected members, you are actually doing well for your community as well about continually to kind of upskill and make sure that you are. Um, so that would kind of be an expectation that yeah, um, that I think we all collect. Cool. So. There are other training courses you can go to as well as elected members. Okay. Run by. GZ, for example, there are other things that if there was something particular that you were struggling with, then yeah. Yeah, you get some help. Yes, a bit like just as examples of that, we've had um, previous councillors that needed some financial support. So um, in the last election, they had they had some one-off time <laughs> to go through kind of you know the financial impact statements, and um, yeah. so again, sure. that's just another example. There's all the documents, and I've talked about lots of those already with these super flash pre election report. Oh, that flash. Flash. Um, and you have all those here? Yeah. Yeah, on the table. And on the website, and, and Peter's got his documents here too, and on the Regional Council website. So check all that out. What's the one key takeaway I've said 100 times? Don't leave lodging your nominations in the last <laughs> minutes. And then here's my second to last slide. Uh, campaign, pretty much anything goes. Good reason, no bridge maintenance. Things, yes. Anything else, all that stuff will happen. Good luck. Here's a link. The council's website already. Do you have to pull that up? Okay. That's pretty clever. Here's the link. This is on our website. The link to the council's website shows the nominations as they are right now. And the catchphrase. <laughs> we need to count the characters in that catchphrase. It's 38. Good. <laughs> it's very it's good. good. <laughs> I have found it. We have checked the characters, cleaning spaces. Sweet. All right. So that's updated. Caitlin updates that every time there's nominations at the end of each day. Um, usually, 50% of our nominations come in in the last two days. But now that I've talked to you guys about it, I'm sure you won't be part of those. <laughs> because if you do bring it in at the last minute, if there's something wrong, you haven't got time to get it fixed, you're not a candidate. It's got to be present and correct at 12 noon on the day. Bring it in 10 minutes beforehand, your nominator's not on the roll, you haven't got time to get it fixed, you're not going to be a candidate. Does happen, has happened, will happen again. You'd be surprised, the number of people. They make the assumption they nominate and second that we themselves are on the roll. They're not. 
my excuse these days to change. So, yeah, I see Caitlin's got that all under control and David has been code. So, um, you can watch that website, you can bookmark it if you like, and see who's standing there. There we go. That is pretty much it from me. Sorry, Peter wants to say a few things. Is your presentation available on CHP's website? Will it be? So tonight's live stream will be available um, on the website as well. So yep, that will be, that will be there as well. And again, we'll throw it up on Facebook. And the PowerPoint? Yeah. 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 Thank you to everyone here. Thank you to those in virtual land. Totally. Yeah, no, like again, I just want to um, probably reiterate the words I said to start with. Um, thank you again for coming tonight, but also just thank you for um, the commitment that you're offering to put forward for, for this great rugby. So um, so with that, I'll pass over to 5 p.m. to close us up. So. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.